Hey everyone, welcome to the 20 sided store in Brooklyn, New York. Really awesome gaming store. They usually, or at least for the past year or so, they've had Netrunner tournaments on the first Sunday of every month from about 1 o'clock to however long, usually 3 or 4 rounds depending on the turnout. They're changing it up. They're going to have Netrunner tournaments on the first Sunday and the third Sunday of every month. So uh, I'm not sure. You know, now there's a lot of Netrunner tournaments in New York City um, between three different places. I don't know which ones I'm going to go to. We're, we're sort of discussing that as a community and deciding for ourselves as individuals, you know, which ones we're going to go to and which ones are not uh, we're going to skip, right? And I guess people who really have nothing else to do will go to all of them. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, here we are at the 20 sided store uh, on April 6th, 2014. This is round two. Uh, me and Thomas on the left both won uh, both games of our first round. So here we are facing each other in round two. He, I'm playing my usual decks that you see in every video. I guess I should make some more videos that aren't tournaments. It's just I only have so much time. You know, so I've only been, rec you know, to make these, uh, and I've been recording videos at tournaments lately, but maybe I'll skip recording at a tournament and record, um, you know, just at a regular old meetup where people are using uh, decks that are more interesting but less competitive. You know, there's, there's plenty of videos already here for you to learn how to be good at the game and win, right? Well, maybe get some more entertainment factor. But anyway... Thomas here is playing a deck I am ridiculously afraid of, and rightly so. He is playing the Wayland combo deck. Accelerated Diagnostics, Jackson Howard, Power Shutdown, Scorched Earth, the whole nine yards. And he is not just doing the simple combo that everybody knows how to do, right? Where you, you know, Jackson Howard back in a Sea Source and two Scorches, and Diagnostics and win, right? Because you know what? A Sea Source double Scorch. If that was going to kill someone these days, you wouldn't really need that ridiculous combo to make it happen. You could get it just by drawing and using Atlas counters and taking money, right? He's got 12 different combos involving power shutdown and accelerated diagnostics that he can use in this deck, right? Uh, that will get him the win in certain situations based on how many credits you have, how many credits he has, how many Jackson Howards are left in the game, um, how many Plascretes you have on the table how many points he's scored, etc. So he has a little chart, and obviously he's not allowed to use the chart during a tournament. That would be illegal. But he has memorized the chart. So, you know, this deck in the hands of me would, would not do well, but that deck in the hands of him, uh, having practiced and memorized all the things, is extremely dangerous. So I don't have a Plascrete, and I know what he's playing. So look at me, I'm just trying to get money. Katie Jones in the opener pretty much as good as a Plascrete, right? I just want to be able to run and not die. So what does he do here? Early in the game, he challenges behind two ice. And it's, to me, I see that, I, I mean, it is an Atlas. We can we know it's a Project Atlas watching this video, but even me not knowing during the game knew 100% that's a Project Atlas, right? So I run it, and a quandary keeps me out. See, he's got just cheap end the runs like that. He wants to spend as little money as possible. Or I had a Parasite in hand, boom, run it again. And Chimera, dang it. So close to being able to get in there and take that Atlas, right? And the only reason I was brave enough to do so is because look how low his credits are versus mine. Um, I wasn't really afraid this early in the game that he would be able to kill me with any of his combos with only five credits or however many credits he had at the start of the turn. What was it, eight, right? Especially when I had nine, 10, 11, 12, more than that. So, uh, but he scored the Atlas because his Chimera kept me out. But now I've got a clone chip, so I can clone chip that Parasite. That Chimera is no longer scary to me, and I'm going to start working at getting money again. Um, I can't afford to just start running his servers aggressively and get taxed uh, because my pile of money is the only thing protecting me from uh, instant death. Here he comes with the Wayland transactions, Beanstalk, install an ice in front of the Chimera. Yeah, because I basically already threatened that Chimera with my clone chip and a Parasite in the trash. So... Um, you know, I need, you know, he needs to put another ice there if he wants to keep me out of the remote. All right, so I drop an Inti for zero. I run R&D. He reses uh, a Hive, which is now at three subroutines, and I don't, uh, I don't break it because now he's out of money. I run HQ. I'm looking for agendas. Okay, I see his power shut down. So I'm, I'm really just trying to check here. Maybe I can score. That would be great when he has no money and can't combo me. Um, 
But also, it would be pretty great if I could see which combo pieces he already has to know how afraid to be, right? If he doesn't have all the cards he needs yet in his hand, then I'm not afraid. So he power shuts down my Inti, I guess because it could get through his hive, um, theoretically, right? But I didn't want to break that hive with his three subroutines and my really crappy barrier breaker. I mean, I was hoping for an ice wall there, right? Um, because that will tax me so much money. Uh, it'll cost so much. Let's see, what would it cost? It's strength three, inti, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. It would have cost me seven credits to break that once to see one card in R&D. Hell no. That's like asking to get killed, right? He would just see swords my brains out. So uh, I'm going to run HQ and, and continue to see which combo pieces he has available. Uh, interns, that's a combo piece for him, but I think it's one he wants in the trash. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, okay, gonna really get some good HQ picks. There's a power shutdown. Okay, so he, he only used that first power shutdown because he already had the other one, another one in his hand. So he wasn't losing his combo by playing it. I'm sure if he only had the one shutdown, um, then he would have uh, not used the other one on Inti. Uh, Aries goes with the subliminal. All right, the subliminal is really good uh, in his deck because I'm not running. He, you know on most turns because I don't want to get killed. So every turn where I can't run is a turn where he gets a free credit, right? To make it even more f dangerous for me to run. So, um, you know, that's that's subliminal. Good card in that deck. It's also part of his combo. Okay, so I'm going to bring out an, in uh, an at minute three. He's only got four credits. So I do have a chance here to run R&D. There's a Jackson Howard. I trashed that immediately, even at the cost of three credits. Why? Number one, I've got a gigantically filled Katie Jones. I'm sa I can, you know, I'll be pretty safe from getting killed once I empty that. And two, if I can trash all three Jackson Howards by some sort of miracle, um, he'll be forced to use, you know, maybe an archive memories or or a reclamation order or some kind of piece, which I think he also needs for his combo to get them back. Uh, it'll it'll basically really really hinder his ability to combo me. Um, and I'll be able to keep the game going for longer. So Jackson Howard is a must trash um, pretty much in all cases, right? It's, it's the only combo piece that I can keep out of his hand unless I have Imp in my deck, which I don't. So, and he's already has an Atlas counter. So I guess, you know, he can go get a Jackson. You know, if he's missing just one combo piece, he's, he can go get it. So he's using interns, but he's not using interns to get his Jackson. He's using interns to put a quandary on his remote, right? He had to tell me uh, what it was because um, uh, it's interns, right? Uh, and I think it was the face-up quandary that I parasited earlier anyway. So it was a face-up card. Uh, and my Atman is at three. I could scavenge it down to zero, and I know that'll take care of both the quandary and the chimera on that remote, but I don't know what the middle ice is. Right, and if I if I you know get rid of the I don't have a data sucker I wasn't I didn't draw one early in this game which is really hurting me, um, so because I don't have a data sucker uh, a zero opman will basically keep me out of R and D and I'm hoping that I can draw an indexing and get an agenda that way instead of um, waiting for him to give me one somehow. Up oh, here he goes installing the remote. And I don't know what he's asking me here. Oh, is he asking me if I ran? All right, he's, he's advancing it and taking a credit. Okay, so we installed advance, take a credit. Oh, I, yeah, I think he asked me if I ran uh, the previous turn so he get a subliminal credit. All right, so there's that remote. I do have the scavenge in hand. I considered, right, bringing the Otman down to zero and running there, right? Okay, empty Katie, so I can't get killed by some Scorch ridiculousness, right? Yeah, that middle ice is scaring the shit out of me. Who knows what that could be? So I'm going to index, which is a move that I can, I can just make, right? Maybe there'll be a Jackson in there I can trash, or maybe there'll be a, a three-pointer I can score, or, or something, right? Okay. Yep, I run again. I still have plenty of money not to get killed, and I take an Atlas. Okay, so actually, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that, because now I'm like, oh, that other card he advanced must not is, is unlikely to be an Atlas, right? So he'll, he'll stay with his one Atlas counter. Maybe it's, I'm thinking it's like a posted bounty, 
right? Um, uh, so he uses shipment from San San, and then advances it. Oh, and it is the third atlas. Oh, this is really bad. So this is really bad because not only because he has two atlas counters, right? Um, but because now he can get two combo pieces that are not in his hand. And I've already seen some of the pieces in his hand. So at this point, I basically have to assume he's got a, any combo he wants. And I know from talking to him previously, he has a combo whereby which he can score a three-pointer. Uh, it's just immediately, like completely fast advance a three-pointer. And I think he needs 12 or 15 credits for it, something like that. I think, right? And so if I run, if I make a run and I don't win the game on that run, then, uh, at least on that turn, then on his turn, he can power shut down his whole deck and do the thing. But I think he needs a Jackson Howard. Oh, but he can get the Jackson Howard with the Project Atlas. So, yeah, he's just taking money. Uh, you know, to, to have enough for his this three-point scoring combo. Um, so my only hope is now to score five points uh, in a single turn, right? So maybe he'll install something in a remote for me, in the remote, and I can take it, or, and then maybe follow it up with an index. You know, it's, it's not looking good. Um, I mean, I got plenty of money, right? I just, I just have to set up. Right, an SMC. All right, so now with an SMC and a clone chip, uh, and the the Otman, I'm not afraid of the remote. I think I can get in there with with, with these tools. I got a grimoire now, so I can install some more stuff. Uh, he keeps getting his. He should be getting a subliminal credit because I'm not running anything. Um, I don't know on which. I don't know on how many turns he remembers it and how many he doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. All right, so he's going to block up R&D a bit. Um, I think because he, he knows I have indexing, right? So I guess indexing is my best chance to score five in a single turn uh, with some amount of luck. So he's going to block up R&D to make it so I can't do that. And he's getting subliminal monies, yep. I'm just trying to get as much money as I can, right? Because even if he's got a huge stack of ice on R&D, uh, if I have a huge pile of money, I should be able to index, run, run, and get, get all the points if they're there, right? If I'm lucky enough that they're there. Uh, but I think I, I also need another indexing or a same old thing, which I don't think I have in my hand right now. And there he goes in the remote. Well, see, this is the thing. I know if I run, then he can basically just win with his combo. But if I let him score that, right, if that's a two-pointer uh, or even a one-pointer, he doesn't need to do his ridiculous combo, right? If, if I just sit here not running, then he'll be at five points, and then he can use those uh, those Atlas counters to score hostile takeovers. In you know, right? So I'll just lose by sitting here, and I'll lose, um, I'll lose by running, and I'll lose by sitting here. So... I pretty much have to take the chance that I can run the remote, score, and then either get the remaining points I need, you know, whether that's a one, two, or three pointer, I need to get the rest of the five points from R&D and HQ on this very turn. So I test run Fem, um, the middle mysterious ice that I was not, um, that I didn't know what it was, right? The one I was afraid of before. I'm just going to shuffle up my deck. And now I 100% know I can get in that server very easily. All right. So it's test run fem. Um, I scavenge the Otman down to zero, and I run there. He doesn't res anything. He gives me the three points. Yep, he just wanted to set off his combo. Um, did I have any clicks left? No, I've, I think somehow I didn't. That was all my clicks. Test run, scavenge, run. Oh, empty KD, test run, scavenge, run. Something like that. All right, so here starts the combo. He messes it up a little bit, but not really. So his first actions, right, which are not clicks at all, is to use two Atlas counters. 
With the two Atlas counters, he gets Jackson Howard and Accelerated Diagnostics, two combo pieces he was missing in his hand. Okay. Click number one. Play Power Shut Down, his entire deck goes in the garbage. Sure. I lose my SMC. Okay. Click number two. Install Jackson Howard. For no clicks whatsoever, he's going to res and use Jackson Howard to put three cards back into his deck. Yeah, that... that oh, I didn't scavenge the fam. I scavenged the Atman down to zero. Right. Alright, so there goes first Jackson Howard. Not a click. So he still has a click remaining. He's going to take a Biotic Labor. Uh, is that a Reclamation Order? I believe is the name of that new Super Archive Memories card. And an Interns. Yeah, I guess I spent too many clicks worrying about that mysterious Middle Ice uh, on that remote. So now he's on his final click. His third and final. He's shuffling him up, putting him back in R&D. Final click, play Accelerated Diagnostics. So these are the three cards he's playing, and he can resolve them in any order he chooses. He's going to resolve interns first to put a Jackson Howard into a, uh, onto the table. Then he's going to resolve Reclamation Order and take all of the... He can't take that Accelerated Diagnostics because that one is the one that's being resolved right now. But the other two Accelerated Diagnostics are in R&D, so he gets them back into his hand. And then Biotic Labor. So he has two clicks now. Okay. It's still his turn. He has two clicks. There's a Jackson Howard on the table, and there's two... Ex uh, oh, yeah, I'm just clone chipping an Inti in between his clicks because that's the only thing I can do. I'm, my game is over. Um, yeah, so he messed up a little bit there. He was like, play Accelerator Diagnostics. Oh, wait, actually use Jackson Howard, then play Accelerator Diagnostics. And he messed up his click counters. See how he spent one right now? But really, he hasn't spent any right now. He has two clicks right now, not one, despite what the red uh, counters say. All right, and he takes... I think was an intern's hedge fund subliminal. Yeah, so that's not his final click. He still has one click right now, right? Because he's played accelerate. He's played just played the accelerated diagnostics. That's the only thing he's done here that cost a click since the biotic labor, and the biotic labor gave him two clicks. So the subliminal messaging gives him a click, right? Um, the hedge fund gives him some money, and the interns is going to put the third and final Jackson Howard uh, onto the table. Yeah, see here he's confused because he he's a click short, but it was just an accounting error with his with his red things because he played he, he was like play accelerated diagnostics and he moved a click forward, um, and then he's like oh no wait I have to Jackson Howard first which he did and then he says okay now play accelerated diagnostics and he moved two clicks forward for the one accelerated diagnostics, um, so. We had a little discussion here, and I was like, I was actually kind of sad. I was like, you know, it's like I'm just going to win because you messed up your stupid combo thingy. <laughs> um, right? It's like because you, you made, you know, because who knows what happened. But then we, we, we recalculated and we figured out, um, you know, how, that it just his red counters are wrong. Um, so I am going to lose this game. <laughs> I've already lost this game. We just have to basically, you know, you have to calculate it out. So... Um, you know, we, we discussed, it was actually kind of interesting discussing all the possibilities, right? Like if someone messes up the combo, what happens? And, you know, it's like, can they rescue themselves somehow from it where you don't just win the next turn and pretty much not, I, I would just win the next turn and it would be really sad. Um, cause that, that's no way for a game to end, right? Someone basically just accidentally losing on purpose effectively. Cause right. So if you're going to run this crazy combo deck, um, you better make sure Right, that yeah. See, this is when we figured out what happened. That you know, we recalculated all the clicks um, that had occurred, um, and determined that he actually had, um, you know, two clicks at you know, uh, at this point. Right.
because the, the he had one, right? He had one. He had uh, he had two clicks from Ibotic Labor, right? And when he played the Accelerated Diagnostics, that was his second to last click, and the subliminal messaging gave him the click, right? So he was down to one click after playing the Accelerated Diagnostics. The subliminal messaging gave him back a click. He's currently at two clicks, right? So now he's getting he's right. So he's at two clicks. Jackson Howard puts in three cards back in the deck, which are shipment from San San, interns, and biotic labor. Okay. So with his second to last click again, he plays accelerated diagnostics. The interns puts the three pointer onto the table. Okay. The shipment from San San advances it twice. The Biotic Labor gets him up to three clicks. And he advances it three times. And that's a three-pointer, which puts him at seven. So the game is over. Watch out for this. Um, I mean, you can run three Plascretes all you want. But if you let him get to four, and he has the cards in his hand, then he's going to win. Um, this was sort of an extreme case. He, he said he had the perfect draw, basically, which I agree with. Also, it might not have looked like it, but I had a chance to, to win this game, for real. Um, you know, I didn't realize that remote server, that middle ice I was afraid of, was, I think, another Chimera. I'm pretty sure it was, anyway. I could have just gone to a zero Atman and run right through. I already knew that two out of the three cards were zero strength. That would have been a good move by me um, to do that and then use... You know, some other some other kind of tool uh, on the middle ice, right? Maybe a parasite or the clone chip on something, or who knows? I had plenty of money, um, so you know, and that would have given me extra clicks to maybe, you know, run and, and you know, he wouldn't have had four points if he doesn't have four points. He can't do the combo. I was super rich, so and he wasn't really that rich, so he couldn't have scorched me, All right? And if I'm sitting at four points and he's at two, I just need to get one three pointer. You know, I can start raiding the centrals as long as I don't tax myself too heavily and give myself a chance to win that game. Um, but I didn't. So here's Trixie Andromeda coming out from him, and now we're going to see a game that doesn't involve um, a very hard-to-follow combo, but instead a very straightforward combo of uh, writing your name on the moon. With your uh, moon advertising laser. So, the thing is, right? So you've seen MBN. My MBN's pretty boring and straightforward. I've made it a little bit more exciting uh, recently, at least more interesting to watch. Uh, but actually, I think it wins more uh, than it used to. Uh, especially NAPD contract. Yeah. But his Andromeda is not an average Andromeda, as you will soon see. It is a very interesting Andromeda. Not like ones you've seen before. So, this game should not be that bad. Mm, he's really liking to shuffle people's decks instead of just cutting. Maybe I should start doing that. I'm okay with that. I actually kind of like it better than just cutting, right? Okay, NBN, let's do this. Will I get the opening hand sweeps week? Right, I have three sweeps week in my deck. But against Andromeda, I seem to not draw them. But there I've got one, so I'm using it. And I'm very worried about account siphon. <laughs> um, so let's start off this game. I think that I put a big nasty ice there. Was that a toll booth? Install something, and there's my sweeps week. So I get eight. I'm not used to getting uh to getting the full credits from that. So here we go. Let's see what Andromeda is going to do. The unprotected R&D on the first turn is okay by me, even if he's got a Maker's Eye or something, right? That's that's fine. That's the worst case scenario, right? If he spends a click just running without a run event, I mean, I guess he could dirty laundry it or something. All right, Fall Guy. Fall Guy very good against MBN. I can't be like, you know, breaking news. Trash Katie Jones if there's a fall guy. Data dealer. Whoa. 
Snap, it's Data Dealer. You don't see that card too often. One use for Data Dealer we've realized recently um, that not a lot of people talk about is uh, preventing the Scorch, right? So it's like you're playing the game, you know, you run, 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 and you get taxed so much that you're, you know, like in the first three clicks, you run a bunch, and you realize that you left yourself open for a Scorch. So you use your data dealer, sacrifice something, you know, one pointer you scored, so they can't see source you. Okay, so Super Sweet Hedge Fund, while he's still got five cards, I got big money now, and I res the pad campaign. So, but he's gonna now he's gonna take his free runs in R and D. He doesn't see anything, and he has no way to dig further. Now he's gonna run HQ. Oh, it's just an ice wall. It's not a toll booth. I thought I, I thought that was gonna use all that money in a toll booth. Maybe that was one of these other games uh, that I have video of. All right, Ice Wall and HQ, open R&D, open pad campaign. And Andromeda's starting to make money. Okay, Jackson Howard, find me some ice for R&D. One thing I've really been trying to work on. There we go. Put something on R&D. So install, draw two, and put something on R&D. I've really been trying to work on, you know, a lot of corporation turns. Like, I have a card in my hand I want to install. So I go install, and, and maybe I install something else, and or, or I take credit. And then I draw. It's like, no, I should have drawn first, right? If I'm going to draw, I should draw with the early clicks, not the late clicks, because I'm giving myself more options. How many times do I install an ice and then I draw, and that I would have rather installed the ice I just drew? That happens all the time, right? So um, if you're going to, you know, before you do anything on your turn, think, am I going to draw with a third click? Yes, I am. Then draw with the first click instead. Then do what you were used. Then you, you thought you were going to do with the first click, right? On the second click instead, and you'll have more options available to you, um, you know. And uh, things will just turn out better. All right. So now I'm double icing up because uh, I only had a pop up window for R and D. He's running R and D some more. Double pop up window. I love double pop up window. For some reason, it really dissuades people uh, from running. And when it doesn't dissuade them from running, it's surprisingly taxing, right? It's like, two credits for an access, okay. It's like, all right, so you run four times a turn and you're losing two, you know, it's like runner loses two credits every turn, corp gains two every turn. That's huge. That is ginormous. I am mega rich in this game. I got, let's say, 5, 10, 19, 20, 20 22, mostly because of the unrezzed pad campaign, uh, the, un the undestroyed pad campaign. Um, a Lemuria code cracker. Wow, I guess... That'll help him know when to run the remote and when it's safe to ignore it, uh, even if you know I'm not running traps or anything, right? He can be like, "Is that Astro Script?" Yes. Okay, I have to run it right now. Or, "Oh, it's not an Astro Script. It's just a sand sand you haven't resed yet." I, you know, or who knows what? Or, "Oh, that's just another pad campaign. I don't have to waste my time there." I guess he's decided to let me get mega rich, um, and he's gonna try to win by by controlling me, right? And not letting me score, uh, not letting me get anything down, right? It's like, you know, I can't use my money to keep him out. I don't have a corporate troubleshooter. So as long as he has enough money to get through my ice and trash my stuff. So I set up the remote with two cards in it. He runs. I got a wraparound. I'm hoping that keeps him out. Uh, at least for now, it's keeping him out. I think he has a corroder in his hand, though, right? Doesn't he have one? There it is. There's a corroder. Oh, but he he just installed. He just filled KD and installed the corroder. He's he's letting me have that remote right now. I guess he could have installed corroder and run, um, but he didn't. So now that my wraparound's useless, I install something in front of it. Try two with Jackson. And install a card in a new remote. Yeah, letting me have the Jackson Howard too really helped uh, a lot, you know. But I mean, that's that's the whole point of my deck is I hope you know it's like I win it. I win either way. If you run and trash all that stuff, it's what it costs him seven. Oh, there's a ninja. Okay, I guess he was slightly afraid of a roto turret or some such. Oh, and a quandary. Look at all these super cheap. Heavily taxing eyes, and that just keeps him out, that quandary. Okay, I res the second pad campaign, I break even, because the one pad campaign 
is a plus one, and the and resing one is a minus one. They cancel. Yeah, it's like if he runs and trashes all my stuff right now, that costs him eight, nine, ten, eleven credits and three clicks, and he's only got seven credits. So, um, right, that's that's just you know if he runs all that, it's like great. Now you don't have any money to get into my servers, and you have to rebuild. Your Katie Jones is empty. I guess he has an Armitage, and he has a Data Dealer, but he hasn't scored anything. And he has a Fall Guy, so. I'm going to ice up Archives, because the Lemuria Code Cracker uh, is making me think about Sneak Door, right? Um, yeah, here he goes running HQ. I got a Caduceus. He's got a ninja. That's really bad against Caduceus. It costs him five to break the whole thing um, without any data suckers or anything. So this is why criminals run Mimic, right? Because Caduceus exists, Caduceus is strong, and Caduceus is popular. Um, it's like, you know, but but what is, you know, if I had, um, you know, an archer, uh, he'd be wishing for that ninja. So it's, that's how it is. You know, but I guess I guess the thing is, when you're criminal, right? You have mimic and you have fairy. So fairy takes care of the big ones, and mimic takes care of the small ones. And it's like the difference between mimic and ninja on the small ones is so big. You know, breaking a neural katana for one versus four, breaking a caduceus for five to break it completely versus two, right? It's just the 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 efficiency so dramatically different. But against an archer, a mimic doesn't break it and a ninja breaks it for 10 a fairy breaks it for what four something like that okay he puts down the crescentus um i'm sitting safe behind my quandary and i sand sand the astro script it is nbn time everybody you know this story you've heard it before I've taken to using my silvery coins and putting them on the moon <laughs> of the Astroscript tokens. Um, I think it's stylish. Trixie's expression on those sleeves is just incredible. <laughs> She's just like, yeah! <laughs> Can you imagine Andromeda having the same personality as, as Trixie? That'd be pretty cool. Oh, he installed the card way out where we can't see on the camera. That's, that's disappointing. Um... I think it might be the source, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Which would force me to use my AstroScript token um, and my SanSan -san to score another AstroScript. Oh, yeah, it is the source. Uh, and he moved it down there um, underneath his Fall Guy and his Data Dealer. Okay, so I'm going to block up HQ some more, play a sweep sweep, and draw just one card, because I, I sort of want to keep the cards in my hand, right? It's like, I've got some, I think I have like big ice in my hand, like a, like a toll booth and whatever, but I, I want to sort of put it down in the spot I need to put it down. And right now, these tiny ice are getting the job done. So, um, you know, I, I'm like, I'm reluctant to, you know, put my big defense until I know where the right spot is, right? And not install it if I don't have to, right? Because when against a criminal, once you put a big ice down, it becomes a liability. Forged activation orders, shut down, forged activation orders. Even though I'm rich, I could be poor very soon. Okay, so with the source on the table, um, I install something in the remote, and I ice it up even more in case he brings out his, um, you know, his decoder. Right, he could just be like, install Yago, because he's got 11 credits there. Right, so, just in case, I put another ice on the remote, and I install something in it. Plays account siphon. I res something. A second caduceus. Yeah, it's cheap for me to res that, and um, because I already saw that he had ninja, right? 
as his Sentry Breaker. I know Double Caduceus is super nasty for him to get through on HQ. And I know an Account Siphon's coming eventually. So um, he spends all his money to break all the subroutines in HQ and siphons me. And I'm thinking about if I want to res anything um, before he siphons or anything like that. And I choose not to. He takes five, gets ten, and clears the two tags, going up to six. From, you know, after spending all of these, right? So I have a breaking news in the remote with a sand sand, so I advance it twice and score it. He has two tags for the remainder of the turn, and I still have a click left. I had to advance it twice because the source is on the table. The sand sand provides the third advancement. I ask him if he wants to lose source or fall guy. He says he'll lose the source and not the fall guy. Which is interesting, right? Um, maybe he's got another source in hand. I can't really see from here. Maybe he is thinking about scoring right now, and he doesn't. He can't afford to pay the three to steal the agenda when he scores. Um, and then, of course, I use my final click to play closed accounts, uh, taking away the six credits he got from his account siphon. So he empties his armitage. He fills Katie. He's trying to get his money back. Uh, he's oh, underworld context. Goodbye. Um, yep, so now the source is not on the table, so I bounce a Gila hands right off my sand sand that is still defended. He just he just can't find his, his decoder, so I'm really, you know, it's it's really not good for him right now. Um, just a bad draw, right? I mean, he, if he had a Crypsis too, I would be, oof, man, a Crypsis here would be really bad for me. He could walk right through my remote. Um, I trash all my stuff. Yeah, I think there is another source in his hand. Um, I've got five, six, I got eight credits. My sand sand's rezzed. I have an acid script token. I have two points on top of that. Um, yeah, it's it's not looking good for Andromeda here. Uh, yep, there's a sneak door. He installs the sneak door and uses it. And a pop-up window. Dink. Do I even have an agenda in my hand? Oh, he saw an Ichi. I get two from two pad campaigns, and I'm going to start power drawing with Jackson Howard. And... Going to power draw some more. Did I see an agenda yet? Did I see I have a breaking news there. I'm trying to, I have a lot of cards in my hand. Only one of them is an agenda. I'm trying to figure out which ones to throw out. Um, and I do have a remaining click. So with that remaining click, I install, I think I just installed the agenda, um, in the remote, right? I basically considered, even though he has no money and Katie Jones is empty right now, I'm still considering the remote to be safer than HQ. He's got a sneak door and a, and the only thing protecting HQ is a pop-up window. The remote has a quandary and another ice on it that I forget. Um, so he probably won't be able to get into the remote. Uh, at all. Actually, definitely can't get in next turn, right? So the agenda is actually safer in the remote uh, than it is in my hand, where he has a chance to get it. So I install it with that final click and throw a bunch of stuff out. I think I'm keeping some hedge funds, because, like, worst case scenario, he's able to bounce back, get money off the Katie Jones that I can't trash because, oh, maybe that's the other reason he lost the source instead of Fall Guy was to protect Katie Jones. Right? Fall Guy's protecting Katie, which is the only source of money in this game, really. Um, yep, there's another source, too. So I, I just installed a card into the remote, so he installs the source to make my life a little harder. I mean, and assuming that was an agenda... If that was an Astro script, I would have to use a token uh, when it was already installed. It doesn't matter. I advanced twice at Breaking News... And I try to trash, uh, well, does the, oh, that's right. I'd, I scored the breaking news, so the source would have been trashed. 
He used Fall Guy to protect it. And then while he was tagged on my third click, I chose to kill Katie because that was his only source of, of income. Um, and I decided to leave the source there because I'm at five points, even with the source. I have an Astroscript token and I have a Res Sand Sand that he can't get rid of. So the source doesn't really bother me in this current situation. Um, yeah. So he's going to run R&D. And I res an Eli. That should stop him. And I drew an Astro script, so the game is over. Woo! It's weird. The source is weird, right? Because uh, I mean, if you're building a general control deck, right? You know, the source is sort of essential, like a, a noise milling deck, something where you're not running and taking the agendas, right? Or you only want to run and take the agenda. You know, because they'll be forced to install it, right? Um, and against an H, you know, but against a fast advance, right? It's like they have to advance it one extra time. But a fast advance deck is the only deck that has the tools to advance something one extra time, right? So if I'm doing a slow advance deck, I go install advance, advance. And if that's a four for two, well, now it's a five for two. The next turn, advance, advance, advance. The source cost me a click and a credit extra you know it's and it, it's no different it's like i was going to score it if it was a four for two and now i'm going to score it if, as long as i have the credit right you're going to score it either way so it, it doesn't really make much of a difference too much of a difference at least for a slow advance unless you're wailing with some hostile takeover action that could be annoying you're trying to score your hostile takeover you have to actually leave it on the table uh unadvanced right but if you're nbn you know, you've got a San San and Astro Trip tokens to cancel out the source. You might have to spend an extra one or install your agenda onto the table. But, yeah. So, his deck has three Special Order and two Crypses. And he just got really unlucky there and didn't draw them. Uh, so, he wasn't able to pressure my remote at all. He wasn't able to get Economy to trash my stuff. He wasn't... He just... You know, nothing was doing. Um, so he got a really, really good draw uh, on his combo deck and, and scored his three-pointer out of deck. <laughs> um, and he got a really, really bad draw on his criminal. And, you know, he didn't get his Crypsis or anything to get into my remote and take my agendas, right? Um, so sad times, sad times. So split, split round, going to round three. Both of us are three and one.